If you're looking to buy a soundbar for your television, you can spend anywhere from $100 to many thousands. But the current sweet spot is $400. While there are plenty of products at this price level, one product stands above them all. Hi, I'm Ty Pendlebury and the Yamaha YAS203 is an amazingly good soundbar which offers a number of features not found on its competitors. This is a stereo soundbar with a separate subwoofer and it's relatively attractive looking and short enough as not to block the sensors on most TVs. Unlike some of the more expensive Yamaha soundbars, this model only does pseudo surround. It doesn't bounce sound beams off your walls. But it does do a better job at creating an enveloping sound field than our previous favourite, the Pioneer SPSB23. Also, the Yamaha comes with both Dolby and DTS decoding, so it's more flexible when you're watching movies. The subwoofer is good at recreating low end sound effects, and the subwoofer volume control means you can tailor the sound to your tastes. If you want to play music, the sound is better than most, and the inclusion of Aptix Bluetooth means your compatible phone can get better wireless streaming quality. As far as connections are concerned, the soundbar has optical and coaxial connections, but no HDMI, as well as a pair of RCAs. If you're looking at spending 400 bucks on a home cinema system, the Yamaha YAS203 is the one to get. This has been Ty Pendlebury for CNET.com. the subwoofer out of the box first. Just be careful as the speaker is exposed on the bottom. Next to the subwoofer is the accessories box, while underneath you'll find the soundbar itself. Open up the accessories box and you'll find the power supply and power cables, IR adapters, magnetic risers, and wall mount spacers. Finally, you'll find the remote. This is only available in one color option, so it's a good thing that it looks good with everything. The most prominent color is black, highlighted with touches of silvery gray metal. You won't find any extraneous curves or scoops here. Everything is clean straight lines and rectangles. The soundbar is 43 inches wide and measures roughly 3.3 inches in every other dimension. It sits high even without the risers so it may block the bottom of your TV. In my case, I found I had to place my TV on a riser to boost its height by an extra inch for everything to match up. The soundbar is pretty heavy so if you're wall mounting it, make sure you've got a solid foundation to mount it on. The subwoofer is basically a black cube on tiny feet, though the definitive technology logo on the front adds a touch of flair. This looks nice enough that you shouldn't feel the need to keep it hidden, though if you want to, it's entirely doable. I ended up placing it under an end table while I was testing the system. The subwoofer is wireless, so the only worry you'll have in placement is making sure it's near a power outlet. There are a ton of input options here. You have the standard optical input, as well as three HDMI inputs and one output which will likely be the way most people use this system. An old school 3.5 millimeter input rounds out the options. No Bluetooth is available, though the speaker does make use of PlayFi, which connects to your computer or mobile devices over Wi-Fi. Pairing was simple with all the devices I tested and streaming performance was good, though it's worth mentioning that Definitive recommends an 802.11n router, which was what I used during testing. Other routers may not work as well. While the included remote offers much more, there are some built-in controls on top of the soundbar. Power, volume, input selection, and wireless setup all have dedicated controls. Looking at the remote, a lot more options open up, including dedicated buttons for subwoofer and center channel volume, switching between music and movie modes, and navigating the menus. The subwoofer is 200 watts and pumps out a lot of bass. With the subwoofer volume set to factory settings, Explosions and Guardians of the Galaxy provided more than the necessary impact, while cranking up the subwoofer volume made some effects too powerful. If you're watching an older film but want the impact of a modern blockbuster, boosting the sub volume is the way to go. The crossover frequency isn't adjustable, but it doesn't seem to need to be. With the subwoofer handling the lows, the soundbar does an excellent job with mids and highs. Again, everything worked great out of the box, but it's nice to be able to crank up the center channel volume if dialogue is lacking. In an episode of Justified, this never proved to be necessary, and as a matter of fact, I found I preferred to keep the center channel lowered a bit. Sitting directly in front of the soundbar with the subwoofer at the back of the room with the system set to movie mode, spatial cues were very well done and the solo surround array surround emulation was surprisingly effective. That said, I noticed that even turning my head to the side would narrow the sound quite a bit. This is to be expected, and unlike lesser surround emulation, this didn't result in the odd circling the room sound that can occur. 
Music sounded great with the speaker in music mode, though the SSA surround emulation could occasionally cause an issue where instruments would seem to fade in and out of focus, even though that isn't the case on other speakers. This didn't happen often, though, and turning the SSA for music mode down in the menu did some. at the Pioneer SPSB23W. This is the highly anticipated soundbar from Pioneer's line of Andrew Jones Design Budget speakers, and the whole system is selling for $400. A Pioneer doesn't look like your typical plasticky soundbar. It sports a composite wood cabinet that's better for sound quality but does add bulk to the system. It stands at about four inches high, and if you're placing it on your TV cabinet, it might end up blocking your TV's remote sensor. The styling is a little boring with a black vinyl finish, but it looks good enough sitting under your TV. The included subwoofer is wireless, and it's tiny. It's actually probably one of the smallest subwoofers I've seen with the Salbar system. That makes it easy to hide in your living room, although it does sound best within a few feet of the soundbar. The included remote isn't great with a wafer-thin design that's hard to navigate by feel. Luckily, you can program the soundbar to respond to commands from your TV or cable box remote, or even better, you can use a universal remote. Around back, you'll find a bare minimum selection of ports, an analog input and an optical input. That might not seem like much, but it's plenty if you use your TV as a switcher by connecting all your devices directly to your TV and then connecting your TV's audio output to the soundbar. There's also built-in Bluetooth with support for the better sounding aptX codec, and that'll let you wirelessly stream audio from just about every mobile device. But the real reason to get excited about this product is its sound quality. The Pioneer sounds better than just about any soundbar we've heard, and certainly better than any soundbar at this price. The little sub delivers a surprising amount of low end, and it blends particularly well with the soundbar. That blend really contributes to the overall natural sound. So while other systems may try and wow you with excessive bass or virtual surround effects, the Pioneer simply strives to sound more like a set of good, balanced speakers. That's why it's one of the few soundbars that actually sounds good with music as well as movies, and most soundbars can't handle music that well. We compared it directly to two excellent soundbars, the JBL SB400 and the Sony HTCT260, and the Pioneer clearly sounded best with a wide range of content although the JBL can sound a little bit more powerful on movies. But the bottom line is that you're not going to get a better sounding home audio system without spending more than this. And even if you do spend more, the Pioneer still sounds better than a lot of the pricier soundbars that are on the market. So while there are some nagging design issues, they're relatively minor and worth putting up with if you care about sound, which is why the Pioneer SPSB23W earns the Editor's Choice Award in the soundbar category. I'm Matthew Muscoviak, and this is the Pioneer SPSB23W. Soundbar with features that approach its sleek, futuristic looks, then the Polk Omni SB1 might fit the bill. This is a 3.1 soundbar with a wireless subwoofer and is available for the not so cheap price of $699. The SB1 features a voice boost function for the hearing impaired or for particularly mumbly soundtracks and it also has its own volume control. The subwoofer level is also controllable. The soundbar can decode Dolby Digital via its optical input and it also has a 3.5mm input. Sadly there's no HDMI. But one of the soundbar's biggest selling features is its compatibility with Spotify Connect and PlayFi. Both systems operate over Wi-Fi and let you stream your own music or Spotify losslessly. Sound quality is pretty good, especially with movies, and the ability to adjust vocals and bass separately means you can tailor the sound to suit the movie you're watching. Like many competitive soundbars, it's not as good listening to music, though the ability to adjust vocal intelligibility can help. The lack of Bluetooth streaming may put some people off, particularly when I found that PlayFi streaming could sometimes be unreliable. The Polk Omni SB1 is a decent soundbar with head-turning looks, but its features may be a little niche for the mainstream user. This is Ty Pendlebury for CNET. Until Vizio came around, we would have told you you were crazy. 
but in the past few years, Vizio's true surround bars have captured a previously uncatered for part of the market. The Vizio SB4051CO is the company's newest system and it's undoubtedly its most attractive. The black and real aluminum colour scheme evokes a much more expensive system and certainly doesn't look like it costs only 350 bucks. While there's no real display apart from volume on the unit itself, the remote control offers a menu system for making changes to settings and it works quite well. This is a 40 inch soundbar which comes with a small wireless subwoofer and tidy surround speakers. The surrounds connect to the subwoofer which means you will probably need to put the sub next to the couch. The soundbar offers a wide number of connections including two HDMI ports, optical digital and Bluetooth with aptX support. If you're watching movies, the Vizio supports both Dolby and DTS. The Vizio offers a much clearer sound than its previous soundbars with excellent dialogue clarity, perfect for movies. But one thing the company hasn't got right is that the subwoofer is still too loud, even with the sub volume all the way down. But with most content, this will only be a minor nuisance. If they can fix the subwoofer problem in a future firmware update, the Vizio SB4051 will be a worthy successor to its previous models. But as it stands, this is still a very good option for surround sound enthusiasts. This is Ty Pendlebury for CNET.com.